What is going on guys? Today we're doing a little bit of a different video. So uh, obviously yesterday, if, you, uh, if you've if you been following the channel, we didn't actually post up any videos. Uh, it's not for lack of recording. We actually did have some recorded. It was a Fire 7 Mention deck. Uh, we're going to be talking today about the ban and Restricted. So for obvious reasons, uh, we didn't feel the need to post it. Uh, actually, it was submitted to us though by Turn 1 Soul Ring, so thank you. Uh, it was the Grixis Fires list that we played on stream. Uh, we were kind of excited to give it its own little video. So uh, we were looking to do that. Uh, but then obviously the banned and restricted announcement came out. Uh, and that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Uh, obviously some really, really big changes to Companion and also just the formats in general. Uh, in particular, Standard. We are going to kind of focus our conversation on Standard a little bit because uh, for now at least, that's kind of the main focus of It Resolves. Uh, to kind of put things in place, this this ban and restricted announcement happened on June 1st. That was yesterday as of the recording of this video. Uh, and to put it very simply, in standard, Agent of Treachery uh, as well as Fires of Invention were both banned. Uh, technically and historic, they were also suspended, uh, which essentially means they were banned. Um, and then Companion has a big rules change. Uh, and what I want to mention is this has not really ever been done in this capacity uh, before we've certainly had some rules changes some some things like that but this is pretty directly different than what is printed on the card uh, which is a little bit weird uh, but I'm, I, I have it pulled up here so I apologize I'm looking off this way but uh, just to read this uh, word for word uh, the new companion rule is as follows uh, once per game anytime you could cast a sorcery uh, during your main phase when the stack is empty you can pay three generic mana to put your companion from your sideboard into your hand. This is a special action, not an activated ability. Uh, in particular, what that means is uh, because uh, it's a special action, uh, you can do it when the stack is empty, but it just means you can't be it can't be responded to, like it can't be countered or anything like that. Um, this is pretty monumentous uh, for momentous, whatever. It's pretty big for uh, for the companion rules and for standard. Uh, and there's a bigger picture that I do want to talk about a little bit later on, but uh, to, to keep this simple first, uh, let's talk about the bans. Um, Agent of Treachery first. Uh, obviously a very problematic card. Uh, we've seen this, you know, kind of dominate a lot of decks uh, as the big win con, and we've seen uh, most recently, due to the most recent set, we've seen a lot of things like Winota uh, or Luca be able to pull this out very, very early swing the game in their favor very early uh and that certainly is a problem um now i know a lot of people were saying well agent wouldn't be banned it's about to rotate out whatever and you know there's there's value to that but um for the standard environment i i don't actually hate the agent of treachery band i think that um you know it's it is a problem card it's a very frustrating card to play against uh and some decks really really exploited it um so do I agree with the ban? I think so. Um, but again, there's a bigger picture going on that we're going to talk about in just a bit. But uh, yeah, Agent of Treachery, officially banned in standard, uh, so no more stealing the stuff. Um, Fires of Invention. Uh, a little bit more of a, a, a talking uh, talking point, I think. Uh, Fires of Invention, to, to put this in perspective for you guys, uh, the, the stat that they cited uh, within the article mentioned... Uh, that the Fires of Invention decks were winning uh, at about a 55% win rate. Uh, it also, uh, and this was not mentioned in the article, this is as of uh, today, mtgtop8.com, uh, represented about 27% of the meta uh, were Fire decks, uh, which is pretty crazy. Um, that's a lot. Uh, Will and I have talked before uh, in various podcast episodes, usually when these ban and restricted announcements kind of come out, uh, that there are particular numbers that you look for. 27% is definitely a red flag. Uh, and the fact that it does win very, very uh, handily, we'll say, against a large portion of the other Tier 1 decks, uh, as well as just most of the other decks in the format, is definitely a problem. Um, I do think that, you know, if I was to ban a card, it would probably be Fires of Invention. Again, realizing we're talking about a bigger picture here in just a bit, but that, uh, that was a big problem card uh, because it allowed for you to essentially utilize your mana at double efficiency. Uh, it got you to a point where it was just difficult to keep up. Uh, I, I mean, that's all there is really to it. 
Um, certainly there are ways to interact with it and ways to deal with it. So, you know, that's, that's, that's here, there, whatever. But uh, it was a very problem card. Um, interested to see how the community itself reacts. I know we've got a number of people on Discord uh, in our community that are kind of talking about this. We saw a lot of conversation yesterday about it. Uh, I did kind of pop in and read some of those comments. I did not weigh in because I figured, you know, we would be putting out this video. But uh, I, I, as far as the bannings go, um, on, on an individual basis... I'm relatively supportive of both. Uh, I, I think it makes sense that they did not ban Luca, um, mostly because he's like one of the new big flagship planeswalkers. And I don't think Luca himself is broken. I think it's what you get with Luca that's broken. Uh, so I kind of get that. Um, Fires of Invention, again, also pretty broken, so I get it. Um, we do have, you know, a lot of broken decks right now, but most of those were due to companions, which we'll talk about now. So. As far as this goes, um, this sets a new precedence uh, that essentially, if they don't like a rule, they have the ability to go in and change it. Now, of course, it's their game. Of course, they have that ability, but it's never been done in this capacity before, and that's what kind of worries me. Um, do I think Companion as a mechanic was ever, you know, broken as a mechanic? Not so much. As individual creatures? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we look at things like Luris, Yorian, uh, even Kahira in particular things. Like, there's there's a few out there that are like Garuda. Yeah, they're pretty broken. Uh, and that's not just in Standard, I will say. That goes for a lot of different formats. Uh, but again, isolated to Standard on its own, still very, very powerful. Um, I don't know. I, I was back and forth on this, in fact... Uh, Will and myself, we, we did record a, a full on, we tried to record, I should say, uh, we were going to bring the podcast back. It was going to be on the, the decision as to whether companion was a broken mechanic or if just there were a couple cards that were too pushed. We both landed in the place, not to put words in his mouth, but we both landed on the place that companion, though very, very good as a mechanic, um, did not necessarily mean it was inherently broken. Um, when you look at a card like the wellspring, the Wellspring doesn't see much play, like, at all, uh, because I don't think that card is broken. Uh, Zerda, at least in standard focused, don't really think that's broken. Uh, Garuda, even, I don't, I mean, while very, very good, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious what you're doing when you're playing a Garuda, so it's usually a little bit easier to kind of deal with it. Um, so, do I think the companion mechanic was broken? No, but I do think that they pushed really really hard on a few of them and it made uh the the companion mechanic as a whole uh feel very very broken keeping in mind that we only had like 10 companions uh if they had made a lot more companions and some of them were worse i definitely think we would be having a very different conversation right now i think a few bands would have been in order but we would not have had this rules change uh do i agree with the way they did this rules change Kind of, uh, not really, to be honest. I think there, there was, there might have been a cleaner way to do it. Um, and in talking with, or excuse me, not in talking with, but in watching some some other videos of some other opinions on this, uh, I think they could have landed in a different place where uh, they, you know, if you if you do have a companion, you draw six cards at the beginning of the game. That just evens out the drawing uh, field. Uh, or, you know, so, something like you draw seven and put one back. Uh, essentially, you take a mulligan on the start or something like that. Just to even out the cards in hand. Um, because, you know, part of the big thing about this is that you start the game with essentially just a free extra card. Um, now, does this solve that problem? Technically, yes. Uh, what does this mean for particular decks? Some of them kind of unchanged uh in a weird way like yorian uh like control decks and stuff like that i kind of don't think this is like the biggest hit to those decks um solely because they're a control deck at heart they're gonna find a place for three extra mana because they're trying to make the game go long uh it doesn't really matter when they do that it it just needs to happen at some point between x and y and x and y is a big gap um for decks like Obosh, uh, yeah, absolutely, it nerfs the deck. Like it, or it nerfs Obosh in particular. Uh, so no, I don't think we'll be seeing stuff like that. Luris decks, some of them yes, some of them no. Uh, like cycling Luris, 
I, I kind of think it doesn't matter uh, in that deck because Luris was never really plan A in that deck anyway. Um, I think in Luris sacrifice decks, yeah, probably. I, I mean, that's a pretty big hit, but we've had sacrifice decks without Luris for a while anyway. Jun sacrifice has been strong for quite a while. Uh, so Garuda, obviously pretty nerfed. Um, things like that, I, I think definitely, you know, it's going to have its places where it's really, really affecting some of the decks, and then others maybe not so much, but uh, it does, I mean, it is a fairly strong nerf to the mechanic. Um, here's my problem uh, with all this, and this is really, I think, the big picture that I just want to put out to you guys, um, and I just want to state that all of this video, uh, aside from a few factual things, have like the stats and stuff. Uh, it's my opinion on stuff. You don't have to agree with me. It's completely fine. If you don't, let me know why in the comment section. We can talk about it. I'm super open to that. Uh, but there's a big picture issue that's going on here. Uh, in the last, like, year, two years, something like that, we have had... I, I, I should have looked up the number, but we have had a crazy, crazy high number of standard bannings. Um, and that alone was its own problem. We've, we've had two as of yesterday. Uh, Oka was a really big one. Um, and I'm, I mean, tons and tons in between where we've just had so many standard bannings. Uh, bannings in other formats kind of make sense. It's a bigger card pool. It's a tougher system of checks and balances. The problem with standard bannings is it's a very clear you have so many, you know, a fairly manageable number of cards that you need to test out and things like that uh, from a design perspective. And for some reason, uh, they're either pushing the cards or not testing them effectively to the point where we're getting a lot of things that are very, very powerful and too powerful for standard. Uh, and in some cases, other formats, uh, which is its own problem. Um, that's not good. <laughs> uh, the The... I think the confidence that that or the lack of confidence that that instills in your player base is very disheartening. Um, I think you run into an issue where you know people aren't willing to invest in your game because why would they? If you're just going to ban them and they lose out on all the value that they just bought, there's no reason to. Uh, and so I think we get to a point where at some at some stage people who are doing this for the collection aspect of it or to play standard effectively have to question is this card that I really really like and is really really powerful just that powerful enough is it too powerful that you know in three weeks it's going to get banned and then all of a sudden I'm out however much money I spent there <coughs> now uh, something to speak on that uh, MTG Arena, uh, I know they mentioned in the article, if you're playing mostly on there and not in paper, um, they're actually going to give you some wild cards in return for the agents and things like that uh, that they're banning, which I think is good. I think it's a, a good way of compensation uh, for that because, uh, at least digitally speaking, it kind of it doesn't mitigate the issue by any means, but it certainly is like a here, you know, we kind of messed up, at least you get something. But it's very difficult to do that in physical paper magic. Uh, you can't just go up to everybody and be like, oh, here, we'll buy those back from you. Like, no, they're not going to do that. Uh, and so I feel like there's a big issue of confidence that you're you're really shaking up the standard player base. And indeed, player base is all around, uh, not just standard. But uh, the other thing is the companion rule, the big picture there. Um, the fact is this does instill, uh, I mean... The black and white fact is you created this really pushed mechanic and then you decided it's too pushed, so we change it uh, with text that is not even on the cards. Um, I, I mean, that's pretty big. Uh, that's not something that's just like, oh, we kind of messed up a little bit. This is like, we shouldn't have ever printed this mechanic. Um, and we've had examples of this before. I mean, Storm, they talk about Storm and Dredge as like the biggest, you know, uh, toughest mechanics that shouldn't ne necessarily ever be reprinted and things like that. And they definitely broke some, some formats, but like they didn't ever change the text that is on the card, so to speak. Um, so I, again, there's a lack of confidence that's going on here that I think is a problem. Uh, how they fix that, I, I wish I knew. Uh, unfortunately, I don't. I think the reality is that they need to really, really look at the the design of the cards when they're 
their play testing and things like that and just spend more time uh, looking at this and making sure that everything is balanced. We do have a play design team in place as of a few years ago. Um, why can't we, why can't we do a little bit more in that realm? Uh, I mean, it's great. Uh, trust me as someone that loves the game, I love to see powerful cards. So it's really, I mean, it's awesome to see cards like Oko come out and fires of invention and things like that because they're cool cards, but if you can't play them anywhere, what's the point? Uh, why did you design a card in the first place that inherently needed to be banned? Um, and so my my issue with all of this uh, is that we really need to, as I, I think Wizards would, I, I, it would instill a lot of confidence if they would say, you know what, we, you're right, we've been doing a lot of things that are way too pushed. Let's take a step back. Let's look at things in the next few sets and say, let's let's really, really drill down, test this stuff, and just make sure we're not doing the same mistake again. Um, it's great to see new things. I love pushing it. Part of the fun of the game is that we get to push into new mechanics in every set. We get to do stuff like that. I don't want to see that go away. I am just I, I, I just want to make sure that you know, as a community and as as a game, there's a sense of confidence when you play the game that, okay, I'm not going to, I don't have to worry too much about the, the next band announcement. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's a problem. Uh, and so, I, I don't know. I Bands are important. I think they need to happen, but I think we're getting way too much. Uh, and this rules change with Companion is a bit unsettling in my opinion. Uh, please feel free again. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, this will probably be our only video today, uh, just because there's a lot of changes coming down the pike. Uh, and so we're going to take a breather from some gameplay just for today. Uh, and of course yesterday, but, uh, I really do, uh, you know, appreciate all the support lately and things like that. Uh, and please, again, let me know your opinions. Uh, like I said, some people voice theirs in our discord channel. Uh, thankful that our community, uh, albeit very small, was very like you know uh, not not hurtful or anything like that to anybody just for their opinions. We certainly don't want that. Uh, it's okay that you know people are gonna have differing opinions. That's completely fine. So uh, regardless, though, voice yours down here. I'd love to talk about it. Uh, and thank you guys very very much for watching. Hopefully, in the future we can gain some of that confidence back. That's really what I want. Um, and I I hope that uh, that is very clear now more than ever uh, to Wizards. So we will see. But thank you again very much for watching. Uh, hopefully we'll be back with some gameplay very, very soon. So thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you then.